internal customer service, it's a mindset. And you know, you, you, know, uh, you guys know that I'm all about mindset uh, when it comes to it, but this is about, actually, we're all in it together. Um, we all um, need to get on with each other. Uh, we all need to treat each other um, as we would treat an external customer. Um, because if we've got that same mentality across the board, then actually, you know, we, 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 we don't have the, the individual mindset or, you know, actually this arm is doing something to different to this arm and so on and so on and so on and so on. And again, this is why it segues so perfectly into avoiding that um, um, silo mentality, hence me putting the, the two together on, uh, on one day, okay? Um, so the first thing we need to know is know about our uh, internal customers. What type of people are we dealing with in our internal customers? Now, you guys, I've seen this a number of times, okay? I've done a whole session on it. I've used it before. Um, the next couple of slides I haven't used so often to give you a little bit more detail into this. Um, but before we get into the actual, I suppose, attributes of customer service, internal customer service, one of the best ways, and you know, hopefully, I don't want this to be kind of Groundhog Day for you if you've seen this a number of times, but if you look at this from an, an internal customer point of view, um, you can absolutely adapt your behavior to get the best out of other types of people. And you're gonna have different types of people. So for instance, you know, if you've got people in, um, in accounts, for argument's sake, people in accounts, um, they're probably going to be quite detailed type of people. So you're gonna have some high blues in there. If you've got people in customer service, potentially you're going to have some high yellows in there. Engineers, again, some technical stuff going on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, one of the best things that we can do is always try and work out what types of profile we're dealing with in different departments. Now, I know that's a manual, uh, you know, I know that's a huge generalization of people in, you know, you, you, we're kind of putting them in a color. I understand that, and it's not always the case, but you can generalize to a certain degree. So, you know, it's quite common in business, there's a, there's a disconnect between, um, um, operations in IT, for argument's sake, okay? I'm not saying this is in your business or Centrica before anybody starts shouting at me. Um, but generally, sometimes you might have a disconnect between uh, operations, sales, IT, for argument's sake, or HR, or whatever it may be. And there's normally a disconnect sometimes between these different types of departments, which again, We'll come on to that silent mentality on the next session that we do. But a lot of the reason, oh, we just had a couple more people join us as well, that's good. Okay, welcome if you've just joined us. Um, the main reason um, is because generally there are different types of people. So, for instance, if we take IT uh, as an example, you're going to get, or you would hopefully, you're hopefully going to get um, analytical, data driven. Um, detailed per people because they need to be that in order to be able to do that role if that makes sense maybe um, you know um, um, technical drawing for argument's sake as well and so on and so on and so on now if you there's normally a disconnect because there's normally two things that go awry there's normally a personality clash sometimes um, and then there's normally an absence of information or understanding between those uh, uh, departments, those people, and so on and so on. Which is why building relationships with people in different departments is absolutely key. Okay, absolutely key. Certainly is for the silent mentality when we get onto that later as well. So, very quickly, reds, direct, straight to the point, um, uh, jump in where angels fear to tread, action orientated. Um, yellows, talkative, expressive, flamboyant, um, sociable. Um, so uh, you normally have these in sales, okay? Probably some of this in sales as well. So a green is somebody that's empathetic, calm, patient, reflective, okay? Uh, and then your blues, data-driven, analytical, as we've already said. So four different types of people, um, but you do start to see them grouped in other departments. Okay, so potentially in operations you might have a mix. In sales you're probably going to get a lot of this. Uh, in IT and in accounts you're probably going to get a lot of this. 
uh, that's in there as well. You may get some more introvert nature in there uh, that's going on there as well. Um, so uh, admin, you might have some of these for argument's sake. Yeah. So you've got to bear this in mind when you are dealing with other departments, when you are dealing with other people, because they may not be your profile. And we know what happens when we go in and sometimes two profiles clash um, and also add into that a lack of information or a lack of understanding of what each other's doing, yeah, because you don't do each other's job, then all of a sudden it starts to kind of fall apart. But I've put a little bit more detail around uh, this profile. I've, I've only shown um, these slides once, uh, these extra slides once before, um, when I did a session specifically on profiling. Um, but I want you to have the mindset of dealing with other people in other departments, okay? So if you're dealing with reds, be brief, be bright, be gone. Okay, so if you, if you know you're dealing with a type of a high red profile, somebody that's very kind of action orientated, short, sharp, gone, they need the details, don't take uh, tax loads of their time, um, make sure you're prepared, do what you need to do. Okay, uh, green, show me you care. Now, I know that sounds a bit wishy washy. Um, what it really means is make sure you're doing the, the, for the right reason. Okay, so remember high greens, lots of integrity, um, and uh, you can't really blag a high green as well. Um, you know, there's a couple of higher greens on this call today, uh, and uh, you can't really blag them. Uh, otherwise, they'll see through your blagging, if that makes sense, yeah? So you've got to be genuine, you've got to do it in the right way. So, for instance, if you're dealing with somebody in another department, and you're starting to recognise there's a green profile, they're quiet, they're reflective, uh, they're good listeners, things like that, then you need to make sure that you, you have uh, positive intent when you're doing something. And you might have heard me use that phrase before, positive intent. Uh, but it's doing something for the right reason. Okay, so you're doing this in order to make sure that the customer gets the output and so on and so on and so on. But remember, this is about looking at your other departments as internal customers. And they may be customers to you as well, that's absolutely fine, but you're also customers to them. So for instance, uh, if you are in IT, then operations might be its customer. Yeah, but also the other way around as well. It is the other way around. It has to work both ways, otherwise it doesn't really work. Uh, are, are, are on the back of it, okay? Um, uh, it, it, yellows want to be involved in things. So again, if you're dealing with another department and you want to get the best out of that person and you've recognised they are a high yellow type profile, um, then actually the best thing you can do is involve them regularly. Keep them up to date, give them the information, involve them regularly and so on and so on. And the blue, of course, the blue wants the details. So if you need help from uh, blues in another department, then you need to be asking for accurate things and you need to be accurate in what you're asking for and very, very precise and very, very specific, okay? So if you're, di this, di this slide here, there's lots of information on it, but this is really starting to get into more detail with these profiles. Like I say, you would have only seen this slide if you did the profiling uh, session that I did. Um, and um, that's, um, uh, it's on the YouTube channel if you haven't already, okay? But you've got you've to gotta be aware here, not only of what a red or yellow is, but what, 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 their, what their red, yellow, green, blue is, but also what their fears are. Because if you understand what their fears are, Remember, when we go into fear, we go into fight or flight, and then you don't get a great response from them, okay? So if we have a look at this very, very briefly, um, reds are uh, primarily focused on results, okay? So talk to them in results. They like to be in control. So even just taking that second point there, if you're dealing with somebody from another department, and they are a high red profile, and you can start to recognize that high red profile, you can help them <clears throat> by giving them information, helping them perceive that they are in more control uh, of things uh, going forward, because that's gonna help you. They want you to be brief, they don't like you to take a lot of time, 
Um, their fear is losing control. So here's another great point. Internal customer service, if you're dealing with a high red profile in another department, if you're not speaking to them regularly, if you need their buy-in, you need them to help you in order to be able to facilitate the complete process to get out to your external customers, then you need to keep them up to date, keep them informed, let them be in control of their part of um, the process that is in place. Otherwise, their fears start to come out and their fear is losing control and that's when they go into fight or flight. Okay, at that point, yeah. Um, uh, they'll be irritated by inefficiency and um, uh, ineffectiveness, if that makes sense. So if somebody's not efficient, if somebody's not effective uh, in a great way, um, then they will be irritated by that. But they're quite pragmatic. However, if they start going into fight or flight, they will be uh, dictatorial, okay? So they'll start to try and dictate. Now this is sometimes where then profiles start to clash at that point. So again, not a whole session on profiling, but it is useful to know, not just that a, a high red is uh, dominant and direct, but also they fear losing control. So if you've got an internal customer, the best thing you can do is keep them involved. Yeah, keep them involved, give them information and so on. Uh, um, remember, involvement and information are the two um, are the two single things that well, there's three, isn't there? But there's the, the two thing, two things that help people through change. Three things really: information, involvement, individual attention. Definitely for reds, that's the case. Okay. Then we've got yellows, and I'm, I know I'm going through this at speed. It'll all be recorded, but I've got some key stuff that I want to get to before we finish. Um, primary focus is interaction. So, if you're dealing with somebody in another department that's a high yellow, you've got to keep talking to them. Okay? You've got to keep talking to them. You've got to, you know, even if sometimes there's nothing to say, it's worth keeping that relationship going. It's like putting money in the emotional bank account, and then when you need it, you draw it back out uh, on the back of it. Okay? Um, they'd like you to be engaged. Their fear is disapproval. Okay, so if they think they've let you down, or or they think that you think they're not very good, yeah, then they'll start to go into fight or flight. So that's why it's really important that there is regular communication with these types of people uh, going on there. Okay, they will tend to over dramatise things and overreact. Okay, that's generally what high yellow profiles do. Okay. Um, greens then, so greens are probably the most difficult per people to, to read um, because of the reflective kind of nature of their profile but if you're dealing with a high green in another department um, then um, their primary focus is maintaining harmony okay, uh, good diplomats yeah, um, so you know Quite, quite good referees, <laughs> people like that, okay, um, very, very useful, um, I, I try, you know, I, I, learn, I try and learn from high greens, with being a high red profile, high greens, they tend to help me uh, as a profile to be able to learn, so if you're dealing with a high green, they will not, they will not particularly want conflict, so if you've got a high green in another department, and you're not getting what you need from them, one of the worst things you could do is kind of ring up and go, what the hell's going on? Yeah, I should have had this by. That's, that's absolutely going to back them right off at that point. Rather than trying to talk to them empathetically, yeah, listen, find out what the issues are, find, get them on board. If you can get a high green on board in another department for you, then you'll start to get some real good uh, cohesion with those other departments that you've got uh, going, uh, uh, going on. Um, their fear is confrontation, as I've said. Their fear is confrontation, okay? Um, they'll be irritated by impatience. So this is where sometimes red and greens um, uh, clash. Um, I did have a profile the other day in another company, actually, that was a green-red which uh, uh, that's the first time in 15 years I've ever come across a green red. Uh, I, I've got red greens, in fact one of your, one of your guys are red greens, um, but a green red which is really quite interesting. Um, insensitive and impatient. Um, under pressure, 
they'll feel overwhelmed. They'll go to the overwhelmed mark at a purely high green, okay? So this is why if, you, if you're dealing with a high green in another department, trying to pile pressure on and make them feel it, you know, it's just going to make them feel overwhelmed. They're going to actually go more introvert at that point, so then you're not going to get the best out of them uh, at that point, okay? Uh, their decisions are considered. In other words, they balance things up and then make a considered decision, okay? And then finally, your blues, okay, your detailed people, <coughs> their, problem, their, their primary focus is problem solving. Now, this is a really important one for internal customer service because, and I mentioned earlier, the disconnect between other departments and maybe like IT, for argument's sake, okay? Um, now, if you actually, you'll notice that a lot of people in IT are generally going to be high blue, okay, because of their profile. But their primary focus is actually problem solving. So if you can adapt your behavior and get them on board for you, then actually their primary focus is solving your problem that you've got because that's their nature, okay? So if you can build those great relationships with those people, you know, I remember in the consultancy I worked in before I started this business, um, we had an external IT guy that came in and did all our IT and all that type of stuff. And, but he was one of those people that was like, it's not just people in IT this, you know, so you, you know, you get builders and engineers and all this stuff. But he's one of those kind of people where you go, this isn't working, Mick, this bit isn't working. And he'd kind of go, oh, you know, I might, I might need to take you offline for this. I might need to, um, I might need to take you offline. You might be without your laptop all day. Um, you know, um, there might be some protocols I'm going to have to install. And it was all a little bit like, cup, uh, hop, you know, cup half empty kind of stuff. Um, however, you know, he did like solving problems. That was part of his profile. It was a very, very high blue profile. Um, and actually, if you adapt, if I adapted my profile, you know, and asked his advice rather than telling him what I think is wrong, because he's the expert in IT and I'm not, actually it created a much better relationship and actually he got things done quicker, faster, sleeker, and so on and so on. So just bear that in mind, high blues, problem solving. So potentially technical engineers as well, problem solving. And that's what you need really if you're turning up and the engine's not working and you know your CHP's down or you know the EV point is not working or whatever, you're gonna need a problem solver in order to fix that. So that's why that's quite good. But there might be a disconnect, for instance, between blue and yellow, just like there is between red and green. Yeah, there might be a, diff a, a, a difference in opinion between blue and yellow. Um, red, uh, blues like to be precise, as we know. Uh, their fear is embarrassment. So a high blue doesn't like getting things wrong. Okay, and they won't give you an answer to things until they, they, they are 99.9% .9 sure they've got an accurate answer for you. Um, so, and keep pushing them won't potentially make that any, any better or quicker. If anything, it puts them under pressure um, and they'll go withdrawn, as you can see here. Under pressure, they will go withdrawn. So there's quite a lot more to those profiles then we are used to talking about with the red, yellow, green, blues, and we, you know, we do a bit of an overview. It's quite a lot. This this slide is actually very, very useful. So if anybody actually wants a slide, let me know. I'll get it out to you because just by looking at this, it's actually quite useful. It gives you. It's kind of a cheat sheet um, for um, for these different uh, these different profiles uh, that we've got. So just bear that in mind. If we throw change into the mix, if we throw change into the mix here, okay, then during times of change, blues, reds want to take action, yellows want to come up with new ways of doing things, uh, greens start to engage support, okay, so they start to help other people, and blues want to know why we're changing when it comes to it, okay? When it comes to taking action, reds want to do it now, yellows want to do it all together, Greens want to do it in a caring way. That's, that's the words that the profiling tool uses. Um, you can replace that with an integral way, if you like. Greens want to do the right thing, okay? Uh, and blues want to do it right. In other words, they want to make sure the T's are crosses and the I's are dotted uh, before you take anything. So, 
I hope you don't mind me going through that again, but it's so important when it comes to really building relationships with anybody, but of course today we're looking at customer service excellence. Um, or customer excellence and service because they're two slightly different things but for internal customers okay looking at our colleagues as if they were customers external customers and sometimes the way that we treat our colleagues is not the way that we would treat our external customers not not whatsoever so if we can get into the mentality of our different departments are internal customers then it changes our approach to them so let's have a look at this then so customer excellence and service they are two slightly different things customer service tends to be reactive okay so um, somebody uh, let's say that we bear in mind this is all internal customer service that we're talking about and um, somebody needs something off you you react to it you, you give it to them in a timely manner they're happy you're happy off you go Okay? Customer service, it's quite reactive. Customer excellence is normally proactive. So you're actually taking time to understand how your best approach is with that department, with those other people in your business, in order to get the best out of them. Okay? And, of course, the best out of you. And if you put those two things together, the best out of them, best out of you, your external customers actually um, start working to uh, start getting the, the the benefit of it okay and again this is why it tags into silo mentality very very well or avoiding the silo mentality because you know the 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 this is one of the the things we're going to talk about in the next one but um you know it's not my fault you know it's not uh, it's not my job that that kind of mentality uh, in a business, first of all, drives me absolutely crazy when people actually start saying that. Um, however, um, it is the case uh, sometimes. Um, so if we start thinking about how can we give best possible customer excellence internally to other departments? How could we make sure that other departments have what they need? And then when we need something from another department, we can hopefully start to spread this internal customer service culture. Um, it only takes between 13 and 17% of your most influential people thinking and acting a certain way to start to change the culture. Okay, 13 to 17 percent of your most influential people. Okay, and when I say influential, some of them will be leaders, some of them will be people that have been there 20 years, some of them will be people that are technically very good at what they do, some of them will be uh, loud extroverts uh, like me. Um, there's lots of reasons how why people can be influential, and as you go, not, uh, guys already know, you can be influential in a customer service, customer excellence way, or you can be influential in a organisational terrorist type of way, which is actually just annoying. You know, I'm not bothered about their department. Let's get done what we need to get done. Okay, so we kind of want all of these departments coming together, Be bearing in mind. If, you, if this is your business, okay, so let's say, for argument's sake, I'm just going to pick it, uh, let's say CBS. I know that there might be a few people here from UKB and, and all that type of stuff. That, that, that's absolutely fine. Let's say that if there was another company, if there was another option, right, think about your department. What do you offer the rest of the business? So think about your department. What do you offer the rest of the business? Would people come to you? because your service is quick, for instance. Because these, thing, these are reasons why customers go to uh, businesses and keep going back, okay? The, these, uh, these reasons, but they all so work perfectly internally. So, why do your internal departments come to you? Is it because you're fast and efficient? You get things done for people, yeah? Is it because you, you provide good value? So you go over the odds, you make sure that when there's a request come into your department to help out another department, you work hard with them, and so on and so on and so on, yeah? Um, luxury. Now, I know that might be more of an external one, I get that, but actually, 
what, what can your department do above and beyond to help other departments to really make an impact? If you heard two people from another department talking and one of them was a new starter and the new starter said, um, what's operations like? What are the guys like in operations? The answer that you would want to that question would be whatever this is you want to get across. You, you might want the answer of, yeah, they're a good bunch actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, build some relationships. They help us out. They, they, you know, they're, they're quick. They sort things quickly. Yeah, actually they go above and beyond. They go above and beyond when, you know, ask them a question, they'll sort it for you. It's absolutely great, yeah? Really, really great. That's the luxury that I'm talking about in that instance, yeah? Or, as the conversations that goes on, oh God, I've got to deal with them. I'm going to have to ring them. That's a nightmare. That's an absolute nightmare. Now, straight away at that point, you can tell there's, there's, there is no customer service, uh, internal customer service in play. And I know it happens across the board. It always happens across the board. Um, sometimes we've got departments or parts of the business we, we dread ringing, okay? And that's why internal customer service is so important. Because if people dread ringing them, what you will probably find um, is, um, spare with me a second. Yeah. Um, what you'll probably find is that things are halted, things are delayed, uh, things are put off, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on, okay? Um, customer service in itself, do people, would people choose your department if they had the choice? Would they choose your department because of the great service they get from you? If they did have another choice, would they stay with you? Or would they go to another department? That is a great question to ask yourselves as a department. Yeah, so think about what you do and how you serve the rest of the organization and your external customers. If your, if your other departments had a choice whether to come to you or go to somebody else, would they still choose to come to you because you give them great internal customer service? Good question. Are you user friendly? And I know user friendly is normally put to a process, but are you user friendly? Do people like coming to speak to you? We all know those people that we fear going to have a conversation with, don't we? So are you user friendly? How could you be more user friendly and make sure that other people um, warm to you? Yeah, They want to come and speak to you. They like to be able to have a conversation with you rather than, oh God, I've got a ring. I've got a ring, Bob. This is not going to go well. Yeah? Um, do you give quality of service with what you do? Is it quality? Or do you just do it as quickly as possible and get it off your jobs list? Yeah? So, Luke, there is a ream of things here that we can do internally to give the best possible internal customer service. Okay? We can do it fast and efficiently. We can give good value, yeah, that might link into quality. We can make sure we're user friendly and people want to ring us and ask us for our support and help. We can give the best possible internal customer service. That even might make people feel that it's kind of luxury what they're getting. We're, we're really being looked after by this particular department. Because we strive to do all of that with our external customers, but we don't always strive to do all of that with our internal customers, okay? So, USP, UVP. <clears throat> what is your quick difference between the two? Um, USP, unique selling point. Uh, some people might have heard of that. It's quite old fashioned now, a unique selling point. Um, it's, um, it's also quite hard to do. Uh, what is unique uh, about what you do, for argument's sake? Um, now, you might have some external stuff that's unique. Uh, if you are um, HR, what is unique about what you do uh, compared to other HR external um, bodies? Um, probably not a lot. Um, so I'm going to drop the USP, but I do want to talk about the UVP. So a UVP is a unique value proposition. So it comes back to the word value again. And I kind of want to hammer this home a little bit when it comes to internal customer service. So what value do you offer your other departments? 
okay? Like I said to you before, one of the best things to think about is if your other department had a choice of whether they used you or not, would they choose you? If the answer to that, to that question is anything other than yes, yeah, if it's definitely no, or I'm not sure, or I should ask the question, uh, and that's not a bad idea sometimes when you when you're trying to assess where you are, speaking to other departments and the uh, other department heads in the organisation, going, do you get what you need from us? Do you get what you need from our department? Do we always deliver what you need? Do we deliver it in a timely manner? Yeah. What value do we give you when you need help from us? Because if that other person struggles to answer the question, again, it's going to give you an indication of what's what. And how great would it be if maybe once or twice a year, each department actually asked that question? What value does my department offer you as the rest of the business? Send out a quick question, don't even have to do it face to face, on an email to department heads, do me a favour, what value do we add to you and your other department? Because that helps you build your value proposition. And you, you and your people in that department, knowing what value you have to, to your uh, colleagues in other departments, um, is actually really quite interesting to know. It also makes people um, feel a sense of value as well. They come to work and they're giving value. Yeah, they're contributing towards the overall arching goal of the, the organisation that we talked about earlier. So again, something to think about. Um, what value do you give? I'm not talking about your values here. You know, your care, courage, you know, all that type of stuff, your, your, your centric of values. Um, I'm talking about what value you and your department offer your uh, other internal departments. Uh, sometimes it's worth asking a question. Might be worth doing, you know, on the back of it. Okay. Customer service, as I've said, is, tends to be reactive. Customer excellence tends to be proactive. Okay. What I mean by that is uh, customer experience or customer excellence you can try and plan for it okay so customer service I'll do this when I'm asked reactively okay customer experience well we can almost map that okay so about four weeks ago I was doing some work with the guys in Rotherham uh, we were uh, doing something called a BPE map we are mapping uh, the process for a BPE for the BPE team from start to finish the whole customer journey all the way through okay um, sometimes and, and what we would the main reason we were doing it for, was for process but also behavior and what I mean by that is customer experience so what's the what's the best possible process for the customer and then what's the best possible process for us to run that internally to make sure that the customers are getting touch points and, we, and then we retain them and we get return business and so on and so on. That mapping process is also very, very useful to do for internal departments. So doing that mapping process and having the swim lanes and who does what and all that type of stuff and when that happens, mapping those processes out internally is actually really useful because it means you can generate the best internal customer experience that flows all the way through. Um, a lot of what this comes down to is customer service, uh, is uh, communication. Actual departments talking to each other on a regular basis, making sure the processes between departments flows quick, easy, slick, fast, yeah, and everybody is adding value to that process rather than either duplicating things or working against each other uh, with that, okay? So, when it comes to customer service, internal or external, but obviously we're focusing on internal, people, process, positive intent, okay? People, red, yellow, green, blue. Know your profiles, know your people, learn a bit more about it. I know some of you on here would have had your profile run. I've run it before. You know, if you haven't looked at it in six months, go and dig it out, pick it up, read it again, read the descriptions, and start looking for different profiles in the business. 
If you haven't run your profile, ask me for these slides, watch the YouTube channel once we've got this uploaded, and start looking for different types of um, profiles, and then how can you adapt to get the best out of them? That's the people stuff, okay? Process, yeah? Map out your interdepartmental journeys, yeah? You're not gonna do them all at once. I'm not suggesting you sit down and you take a week to do this. But if there's, you know, go to your, go to the ones that caused you most fires first, yeah? You know, go to, you know, for instance, I was talking with, um, with Dean Maller last week. I was doing a, uh, a leadership training session with, uh, and, and Dean was part of it. Um, and Dean was telling me they've generated uh, integration. I think he called them integration uh, engineers. It, you might have to correct me, Pete, if, if I haven't got the right phraseology here. Um, but integration um, engineers, um, to, to between kind of commissioning and engineers and, you know, pr trying to bring the new, you know, the design and new product together, all that type of stuff. Is that, is that right, Pete? Yeah, great, fantastic, good stuff. Yeah, um, that's a perfect example, an absolutely perfect example of when people and process starts to get looked at. And what a great, I did say this, Pete, actually, to, to Dean, what a fantastic job role, integration engineer. How great would it be if we had integration people to make sure that that departmental internal customer service was working on a regular basis. How great would it be? And I'm not just trying to make up jobs for job's sake. Maybe it's not a full-time job. Maybe it's somebody's job as well as doing their job. Yeah, you could argue maybe it's all of our jobs to make sure that we're all partly interdepartmental integration experts, yeah? Integration officers, if you like. Um, and I just thought, are you, I thought I'd use that example today, because when Dean told me about that, um, and I'm not sure if Dean's on today, actually, but uh, when, when Dean told me about that, um, I just thought, do you know what? That's absolutely fantastic, that is, um, because it, it goes a long way to go, okay, so we know we need to get our people bit right between departments because we know people clash sometimes so we're all going to have to do a little bit of adapting behaviour but what are the processes in place as well? What's the internal process map between this department and that department to make sure everybody's giving value and, the, uh, and of course the output is external customer service, the best possible external customer service. And you can see this, when you see businesses that are seamless with their processes and their interdepartmental working, the end result is easier, quicker, faster, more profitable. It is so, so important. Um, Rolls-Royce Aerospace, when I was I did, doing some work with them, um, they were very, very siloed, and I'm going to use this example later but in a bit more detail, but just briefly, in the end, uh, instead of having you know, somebody making <clears throat> engineers, design, um, HR, um, sales, um, maintenance, um, they had all these, all these different departments for making an engine, uh, an aircraft engine. Um, in the end, they actually changed their whole process. They integrated one person uh, responsible for one engine, so let's say the Trent 1000 engine, something like that. Um, you know, those are the engines that kind of go on 747s and things like that. Um, the Trent 1000 engine had um, a, a project owner, had somebody from sales, had somebody from maintenance, had somebody from HR, had somebody, and they streamlined the process all the way through because their interdepartment, inter, uh, interdepartmental uh, inter conversation and the way they work didn't work very well, actually. So there's loads of different ways we can do this, um, but it's so important. The lastly, is positive intent. Now again, I used this uh, frame, uh, uh, phrase earlier, and you've probably heard me say it before. This is a biggie when it comes to internal customer service. If you do things, for the right reasons, even if you get them wrong, some people will normally get over that and let you off, okay? So if you do something with positive intent to help another department and it doesn't quite come off that way, once you've explained the reasons for doing it, people normally go, okay, fair enough, go with it, okay? It's the people that don't have positive intent that bring up all the walls 
in all the other departments and then of course trying to get customer service through a wall is more important and then of course you get a silent mentality which we're going to do in about 40 minutes okay okay so customer experience um, customers for life now if I was talking to you about this externally um, I would say how do you need to get customers for life what are the three things you need customers for life um, your internal customers are customers for life whether you like it or not generally most of the time okay I know sometimes things are outsourced and things like that but generally most of your customers for life which is why we actually sometimes take them for granted we don't take our external customers for granted because they could go somewhere else and get another product off somebody else so we don't take them for granted because we don't always know where we've got them for life but our internal ones we know we've got them for life because that that's just the IT department that's just the HR department that's just the operations department that's just the sales department so well they're always going to be there so we don't have to treat them in that way because they're just there that's their job isn't it to help us it, do you know what yes it's everybody's job to help each other but whether they do it and actually make sure that they're treating their external customer, uh, internal customers appropriately is a slightly different question, okay? Um, so, map the journey if you possibly can. Like I said, um, that's quite useful. Map the journey. What, what is the interaction between these departments? Can we map it? Can we make it quicker, easier, slicker, faster for everybody? Can we know so people can follow it? That way, you're going to get the best out of both departments if you can do that. Number two, communicate, 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 okay? There's got to be regular dialogue, yeah? Sometimes um, companies also do uh, things like job shares uh, and things like this. Um, God, I remember way back, many, many years ago, when I was very new into uh, energy uh, at the time, and um, literally not long before I came in, um, there was a bit of job swapping going on. I think some of the stores guys had spent a bit of time with the service desk. Some of the service desk had spent a bit of time with the stores. I know the service desk girls have been out with engineers and stuff like that. All of that type of stuff is all great because it keeps communication flowing between departments so people have information. Remember, in the absence of information, people make it up. It's as simple as that, okay? Communicate, 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 yeah? Um, it says customer touch points, internal customer touch points. How often do you speak to other departments? How often do you ring another department or speak to somebody just to tell them they've done a great job rather than ask them for something? Yeah, there's probably not the same balance in place. You're probably asking them more than you're telling them for doing a great job, but it goes a long way that goes a long way to ring, ring up another department and go in there. Do you know what? You've, you've really facilitated this for us. You've, that's a great, just, I just wanted to say thank you because you've done an awesome job on that. Yeah? Really useful to do. Okay? Oops. The key thing though is measure and review. Okay? Now this is something a lot of companies don't always regularly do. How can you measure your internal customer service okay internal customer service normally gets left out of measurement even if you're doing employee engagement surveys uh, customer surveys uh, and so on and so on and so on that's all fine employee engagement is normally about the individual not so much about the department um, and of course uh, customer surveys are, are to find out how good your external customers your external customer service is but how often do you measure and review your internal customer service? And do you know what? This doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to turn into a big survey with lots of, with, with 20 or 40 questions in it. It could simply be once a quarter, worst case half a year, yeah, then, you know, the head of the department or somebody that's, that's um, been appointed to, to take um, control of this, um, it's maybe firing an email out or, or picking a phone up um, to other departments and just asking a couple of questions. Um, how, how well are we facilitating what you need from this department? How well are you treated when you phone and, and ask for something from this department? 
how quickly do you get a response from this department when you ask us for something. It's just little few questions like that that actually make the difference and you can measure and review. And you know, the reason people don't do this is because they think it's too hard, it's too difficult and there's too, too, they haven't got enough time to do it. It doesn't take long. Come up with three questions. Three questions, fire it out to other departments and get some answers. You can even use a 1 to 10 scale, yeah? You know, how quickly do you get a response from our department? One, never. Ten, within an hour. Yeah? You know, what value do we give you as a department? Yeah? One, no value. Ten, absolute value. Or even one to five, whatever. It doesn't really matter, yeah? But it's worth doing, okay? So, map the journey. Get buy-in and communicate. Build relationships. And measure and review your internal customer service, okay? Building relationships. Again, you might have seen me use this, very, very important. Acknowledge, you've got to acknowledge each other. Then you've got to understand, and I've put it in capitals here, yeah? You, this level, when it comes to internal customer service, this level and relationship is really important. Understanding what other departments do. How many times have you heard people say in your careers, God, I don't know what they do over there. I just don't know what they do, yeah? Find out what they do, because it might give you a better understanding. Now, I know you haven't got the time to know exactly the ins and outs of everybody else's job. I understand that. But if you understand them more, and they understand you more, then you're going to get to a point of acceptance. And you can see at the point of acceptance, I've put P-O-S. Point of sale. Okay? That's where you give your customer service at that point. Okay? If, if they haven't accepted you for who you are and what you do, and they don't quite understand what you're doing, you can still give service, but it might not land in the, in the same way. So, it's everybody's job in a business to try and understand a little bit more about what other people do. Yeah, Goals and roles are the two key elements for generating a high-performing team. Goals and roles. Okay? Of course, over time, hopefully, you build respect and you build trust, and if you build trust, you have a customer for life. Now I know your customers are for life internally anyway, but if you build trust between two departments, things just get quicker, sleeker, faster, um, more effective forever. It goes on forever, but it's something that you've got to keep working on, okay? It's not something that you can um, allow not to happen, okay? Final thing, complaints. The interdepartmental complaints, okay? A complaint interdepartmental is a massive opportunity, okay? When somebody complains, if you give effective customer service to them, you, they, they can go away and will return to you happier than if there was no complaint in the first place, okay? So this, a complaint isn't something to go, oh God, we got it wrong, that's a nightmare. It's an opportunity to go above and beyond to make sure that those other departments in your business know when you make mistakes, which everybody does, you can fix them quickly, in a timely manner, in a great way, adding value, no problem whatsoever, and that customer, that internal department walks away happier than if there, were, there wasn't even a problem in the first place. And that's within us all to be able to, um, uh, to produce, if that makes sense. So, it's 11 o'clock. That's it for internal customer service. Hopefully, it's not quite as simple as people think internal customer service. We've got to work out why people do what they do. We've got to look at the profiles and building relationships. We've got to look at the processes uh, and how you can map them out. You've got to be regularly communicating. You've got to be turning complaints into opportunities. And you've got to be trying to measure and review how that service is coming across to other departments. Okay? So, hope you enjoyed that. As always, um, put a bit of feedback in the chat box before you leave. Uh, we have avoiding the silo mentality in 29 minutes. Uh, so, I will see you then. If I'm not going to see you then, have a great week uh, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now, everybody.